through the curtains we could see the search, searchlight circling the sky and hear the ack ack sound of the anti-aircraft being fired. We went down the stairs to the front parlour where my sister Jessie, my Aunt May and my mother were standing near the window looking at the sky and my father was at the front door talking to some of the neighbours. My mother had a bottle of holy water in her hand and was sprinkled around the room and the stairs and the hallway. She kept this bottle hidden in, in the large back bedroom that she shared with my Aunt May for use at times of fear, like whenever she heard a banshee on the canal or there was a bad thunderstorm. My father, being Scottish Presbyterian, was not aware of its presence and probably would not have approved of being in the house. <laughs> we weren't downstairs very long before the house quivered with a tremendous explosion that seemed to come from just down the end of our road. It frightened us entirely and my mother pulled my brothers and me to her and started praying while my father hugged my sister and aunt. Next we heard loud voice and the sound of running feet outside the door and looking out we saw our local ARP man climbing up the lamppost outside our house and lowering the dim glass light to a mere flicker and this was shortly followed by the shouts of our local LSF man climbing back up the lamppost to raise the flame to its previous dim illumination. In about 10 minutes time there was an even more powerful explosion and again the house vibrated. We sat down in the kitchen terribly afraid of what could possibly happen to us. My mother and my aunt still praying, and my father opening up the gas mask boxes that had been there for some time. My aunt seemingly came charging into my dad's bedroom, flung him and the bed upside down, pinning him under the mattress as the wall came in. And he thought he was trying to kill her, but in actual fact, he sa she saved his life. And from then on, my grandfather, Francis, who had huge experience in the First World War as a medical, he was a petty officer in the Royal Navy, he just went in straight into action, I believe, and organised a lot of the St John's volunteers that lived around the North Strand straight into groups. And my dad, who was 10, he set up as a messenger boy, as a runner, with other local boys. So they had to run between Clonliffe, which was the only place that had a phone, and into the city centre bypassing the other crater and uh, he then subsequently organised people to gather remains for, for, for identification later right. which was pretty gruesome but I think he'd seen so much himself he just went into automatic pilot and just did it and then he ran the risk of, of arrest because he had to set fire to the main gas main, because also my grandfather happened to be the Glimmer Man, which was a hated role down <laughs> in the North Strand. But he he had to set fire to the gas main in order to um, stop a further explosion that actually would have been bigger than even the bomb itself. And with that, the ARP, local ARP guy, auxiliary guy, came up to arrest him with a wooden gun. And because he figured he was signaling the Germans, but the Germans had already passed at that stage. We were asleep in bed in 1941 when the bombs went off and the house shook somewhat and uh, woke us all up and we came down to the kitchen and my father arrived in his pyjamas and he put on his overcoat and ran out onto the street. And of course there were a lot of people who had opened their hall doors and they had come out onto the street to see what was happening. And he was running up and down telling people to close the doors and put off the lights in case there was another set of bombers coming over. So after a while he came back in and he said that where he could see the glow, he figured that it was quite close to his mother's house, which at that stage was in Sean McDermott Street, quite close to the five lamps. And uh, he decided anyway that he would... Uh, get dressed and set off on his bike to see if there was any injuries or damage done to the house. I also remember the gas masks and I was very annoyed because my brother, Dennis, got a gas mask that was like a kind of a Mickey Mouse face on it and I didn't because I was older. Anybody I think under three or four got these fancy ones so yeah. they wouldn't be frightened about them. But I remember an aeroplane, two aeroplanes, an RAF plane and uh, a Luftwaffe plane, having a, a dogfight, I think they called it, right. on Sandyman Strand when I was going to school. And one was chasing the other, trying to manoeuvre 
into position to shoot him down. And I thought it was great. I mean, what better could you get going to school than two exactly. planes exactly. having a dog fight? Yeah. I was sleeping downstairs that night. I couldn't, I was restless. And my mummy and daddy were downstairs and I sneaked in beside them. And with this, we heard a merciful bang, a merciful bang. And um, mummy shouts out, oh, well, we'll be all dead, we'll be all dead. And uh, I got so excited too, and we all jumped out of bed at the same time. And I remember I fainted when I got into the hall, conked out, yeah. and um, came around eventually anyway. And um, all the commotion that was in the streets of women crying. And My father and myself seen two planes going across. I was all going home in the brigade. We make, used to meet on a Friday night and we were having our supper and, uh, and it must have been around like 12 or half the 12 but we heard the planes coming over so we went out to the door and we looked up and we seen them, seen them passing and just like when they were about over there like we seen the fl little flashes you know and uh, well we didn't figure what it was then but we knew then when we heard that uh, and I heard the, mm, the bombs and, the, and then the whole place lit up red and we could see the sky was red over over Leeds' fault, you know Leeds' fault, it's beside us before you come to the bridge, you know. I recognised the whistle of the bomb and yeah. I knew it was an air raid and then the explosion came and a lot of the plaster on the ceiling came down. We had an extension at the back of the house, it was, it was a wooden extension that was blown in two. All the three had more or less the same type of problems with the house. We had barely got to the front door looking when the bomb fell and the building came down and collapsed. We went outwards like and the remainder of the house just collapsed. Then subsequently they fell on the North Strand. We didn't know what had happened really. Then we assumed that there were anti-aircraft guns and it must have been a, an air raid. There wasn't much to see or hear. But of course, after that, the AORP, air raid precaution, they came and all fuss and bother. And I was trying to see where my relations were. My mother was with me and uh, my sister and the others, they were dug out while we were there. They got them out, really? yeah. pulling bits of masonry and all that. My grandmother, she would have been in the 80s, I think. She went off in an ambulance. From memory, we'd cousins down near Clonliffe Road, the Parkers, and they came up and brought us down. But I said I'd better try and find out where my grandmother was. And the them said Jervis Street, so I went to Jervis Street, no sign. Anyway, went up to the matter, and she was located there. <laughs> 